All right, the EG4 Solar Mini Split uh, Part 2. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this uh, install and show you a couple things from that. And we're gonna talk about the questions that we had in the comments from the first video. I'm gonna try to answer some of those. So if you're interested in that, hey, go ahead and stick around to the end. All right, so this is what we got. I was gonna put another sub panel in over here. And I'm looking at these wires. Of course, I'm not an electrician or nothing like that, but basically I was gonna take the wires out of here, put them back through here, put them in the new sub panel. And I'm just not know. I don't know if I'll be able to fit more wires back through here, and everything. So he said that this old well one, they don't even use it anymore because they're on county water or city water or whatever. So they don't even use the well one anymore. So I'm gonna take this breaker out and just uh, wrap those wires up in electrical tape. And if we ever need to hook it back up, we can put a bigger sub panel in. And for now, I'll just move this breaker over, put our 240 breaker in we need for the for the mini split and then we should be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, we we're able to get the breaker in here. We took out our old well uh, breaker and then we put our 20 amp in for that mini split. So of course, right now it's running and it's using a little AC cause it's got some dark clouds and a little bit of rain coming down. So everything is working and we didn't have to put in another sub panel and we may put back in that well uh, breaker as a backup when we do his whole house with solar, uh, maybe he's gonna do that next year or something. And we'll just add in a bigger panel in the place of one of these or in the inside. Then we'll have to worry about it. We have plenty of room, but right now everything is working. As you can see, I got the conduit in for the PV, you know, got that all connected. We got a little bit of wrap on the line here. We would have put the line set on, but it seems a little too small for that. So he's gonna try to get a bigger one and do that himself. So bam, as you can see, definitely looks a little neater than it was the last time I was here. You know, he's gonna do a little bit of cleanup with that line coming down. We got that PV line hooked up, got it going through one inch conduit now. And we went ahead and put a box in for that connection that I made. And at some point we may go ahead and when I get some more PV line for some other projects, go ahead and rerun the entire line. So it's one solid line coming all the way down to the switch. But for right now, it's definitely not gonna hurt it being connected inside this box. Cause I mean, you have PV connections up top anyway. So it's definitely not gonna hurt anything. We should be good to go for now. I do have a fuse on there. I don't know if I talked about that in the last video. So I did put a fuse. Of course we do have a breaker. And so we can go ahead and turn the unit off when we need to do servicing or something. And hopefully we never had to do anything like that. Let's go ahead and show you what it looks like. Guess the ladder is still in the way, but as you can see, we got the six panels, 455 water piece on top of the roof. And even a day like today, it's pulling in uh, pretty good. The sun's starting to come back out a little bit now, but when it was really dark earlier and raining, we're still pulling, pulling in about 650 watts. So about, uh, 400 maybe was coming in or 600 or something like that was coming in from the grid. All right, so people had a few questions about uh, the setup in the first video. Basically, uh, all six of my panels, all six of his panels up there, they are in series. So we don't have any in parallel, so it's one string, but it's 2,700 watts of panels and it's been doing a good job of keeping this stuff running even before I put the grid on, you know, I guess it would just lower the power that it needed to run. And then of course I'm not an electrician, but a few people had questions about the grounding. Basically I have all the grounds tied in together to the main ground uh, for the house, for the, the, the AC system. I have the PV one tied into the same one, at least for the grounding. Like I said in the last video, you know, this isn't a how to, I'm not an electrician. You know, I'm just helping my friend out, trying to get the system installed to save him some money. And also to be able to use air conditioning and heat when the grid goes down. It was cloudy today. I went over there and put the uh, breaker in for the grid. And as you can see, you know, it was still pulling pretty good power from the solar panels. I think it was pulling 600 and some watts from the solar and then maybe like four to 600 watts from the grid power. So the AC definitely not doing that bad. And he says it basically is freezing them out of the house. And this air conditioner, it's not made to go in a house like the, like we put it in and go into multiple different rooms. It's really made for one big room or a big garage or a big shed or something like that. But basically it's cooling most of his house and he's able to set it to 67 or whatever, or 68, set it up higher. And when you have it down on 61, he's basically freezing his family out and it's working good. The only room it doesn't get is all the way in the back of his house in his bedroom. So he put another unit uh, back there in the back and it's keeping that cool. So it's doing good. So definitely it's just something you're interested in. They definitely seem to work well. And the installation was 
fairly straight uh, forward. The problems we had were mostly because he had an older house. He had several layers of panels, including the brick. You know, so they had like three layers of paneling and the brick. So it was just a little bit thicker. So we went to go bend the lines. One of the lines was a little shorter than the other one. So we weren't able to bend it all the way down and make it look uh, uh, that pretty curve or whatever like the other one. How it's coming down at the 90 uh, curve, nice angle. The other one's kind of going out a little bit and then we got it coming down. So that was really the, the, the only problem I had with the, with the whole system. But if you have just a regular house or just a regular brick house and only have like one layer of, of either sheetrock or some kind of paneling or something, you should be good to go. But there's three layers, you know, it was just really thick and then you had to go through the brick. So it's just a little probably larger than most people's gonna have. So a lot of the questions people had were related to how much power the thing uses. And at night, he seems to be using in the 400 to 600 watt range most of the time. So once your house is already cool, it's using very little power at night, you know, to keep your house cool because of course the sun's not out. And then when the sun comes out, depending on where he has it set at, he uses between 600 and 1000 watts which definitely not bad. When it's doing startup, it will use just a little bit over 2,000 watts on startup to get everything cool. But once it gets down, you got to set an auto at that set point. Let's say you got it set at 67. It may only be using between 600 to 1,000 watts during the day. So the power usage is great for this unit compared to his other unit. His other unit was probably like 20 years old or something, and it's using a ton of power. So he's definitely going to save on his power bill with this because during the day it's going to be running on solar. And at night, he will be pulling from the grid. Another question people had was about the brackets for the roof. Um, some people were asking about the spacing and stuff like that. And to me, the spacing seemed fine. I don't know if it's like a code. It has to be so much spacing. But basically, it's just the thickness of the bracket on the ridge of the roof. That's just that's going to be your spacing. So I don't know if they're try somebody was trying to say that's not enough. But everything seemed fine to us. And it seems to be working good. Not had any problems with it. And probably the most controversial thing about the whole setup is everybody was trying to say, I need to pull a vacuum on the lines and, you know, different things like that. You need different tools. You need an HVAC tech, all this stuff. But these lines are pre-charged, the whole thing. The unit's pre-charged and the lines are pre-charged. So the lines basically have quick connects on them. I'll go ahead and show you that. But the lines have quick connects and it's basically a double safety seal quick connect. So they basically, if it's not completely connected and sealed and pushed in, there's not going to be any release of the liquid and there's not going to be any flow from, from the unit to the lines until it's completely sealed. So with that being said, all the stuff being inventory, you know, you don't need any tools. That's why it's DIY friendly because of the quick connects and that double seal pre-charge line set. And again, if you have any questions about that, hey, feel free to contact EG4 Signature Solar, you know, I got confirmation from them that the things are pre-charged and you don't need any tools. It says it right on their website, but I still contacted them anyway to verify that it was not a problem with that. And they said that's exactly how it's supposed to be done. So I think the only thing I didn't complete on that whole job is the line set cover. I wasn't able to put that on because the line set cover we got, it's just too small because I we, the, the lines are coming out a little further at the top than you would want but I didn't want to keep bending and kink the line just because it was just a little short for how many layers of panels and the brick and everything that he had. But, you know, we did the best we could. So we're going to have to get a bigger line set to cover that up. But everything else is pretty much complete and the unit's been running great. He definitely loves the unit and he's already talking about getting full solar for his whole house. That way at night he'll be able to run the whole thing. So who's this EG4 mini split uh, good for? I mean, I think anybody can have one of these as a backup on their house and you put it in your living space that people are usually in your living room your dining room your kitchen wherever people usually hang out in your house that's where i would put one of these units or you can use it for a garage or a shed a barn any of those types of open spaces because that's what it's really made for is one open space it's not made one of these units is not made to do multiple rooms really but uh it is working at his house to do that you know, his house is not huge. It might be like 1,400, 1,500 square feet total or something like that. But, you know, there's a lot of angles and a lot of hallways and stuff like that for the air to get down. So it doesn't get the room quite all the way all, all the way at the back of the house. But all the other bedrooms and dining room, the kitchen, 
It's keeping all that cool. As family says, if it's turned down low, it's freezing them out of the house, basically. So what questions did I miss? I want you guys to leave it down in the comments below. I'm sure I missed some. I tried to do the main ones, you know, about the lines being pre-charged and stuff like that and the grounding. If you have a specific question that I didn't answer, go ahead, leave that down in the comments below. Hey, if you'd like this kind of video, hey, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and thanks for watching.